Glen Coda Red Slide. It's running at about seven and a half feet. So it's gonna be full on white water. If you don't have white water gear and skills, this will not be the level for you to try this river on. We're getting geared up. Let's get on the water. So today at 2,500 CFS and at seven and a half feet, the Hall River will effectively be Evan and Guy's introduction to big water. And another thing we've been working on is introducing more and more paddle etiquette to Evan and some of the other new guys we've been working with. And that shows up here where if someone's surfing a hole or a wave, give them a little space to do that before you jump in there with them. On the flip side, someone coming down river has the right of way, so don't surf in a hole when they're coming. But in this instance, you see Pete surfing and Evan ferries across to get in the same hole and crowds Pete out and right there almost paddles him in the face. He checks his swing and Pete was ready anyway. No harm, no foul, but we're just trying to avoid those situations and maybe use a little patience, maybe wait a turn and just give some other paddlers a little space if they're in a feature. Now, before I go any further, Evan is one of my favorite paddlers on the planet and his potential is limitless. And it has been an honor and a pleasure to be a part of his paddling journey, as well as Guy, his father. And uh, speaking of Guy, he had an unfortunate occurrence in uh, this big water on a river he's never been. And you can see these large eddy spaces in the middle of the river where there's no current. Some of those eddy lines can be a little swirly and tricky, and Guy finds one right there. If you watch him, does not edge into that eddy correctly, grabs his right edge and he's down. Now I'm watching, got my eyes on Guy, and right about here I see his left hand reaching for the T-Rescue tap. I do not see his right hand, so I change my stance up, come around to that side of his boat and place my boat gently against his, but now he's tapping the other side of his boat and Evan coming in to help does what we don't want to happen. Comes in a little sharp and pops his dad in the helmet as his dad's head comes up for a little air. Guy was fine. Evan's still wanting to help. Evan is now beating on his boat to let him know we're there, but Evan's nose is actually not anywhere close enough for Guy to get his hand on it. So while Evan was trying, we just need to be a little more careful how quickly we come in for a tea rescue or how fast we're bringing that boat in, especially when people's faces are down there on the face of the water. So kudos to Evan for helping his dad out and for being there. We just need to be a little more thoughtful with how we apply the efforts. And again, let me just say, I don't know a whole lot of eight year olds who are in big water coming to help assist in a tea rescue. So definitely is no knock on Evan, uh, but his father and I were talking and we've been working on these things with him. And I think maybe if he can see it, it might help him understand. Also, I know there's a ton of you guys out there who are just getting into this stuff who may be wondering, you know, what are the rules of the road here? And uh, maybe you can get something from it as well. All right, so we had a little fun. We had our first swim. He had a weird eddy out there in the middle of the river. And um, this river at this level has got a lot of weirdness to it. A nice, nice grouping of ledge holes and just hard eddy lines and just weird swirlies. And uh, that's what got him. He was trying to do the tea rescue, but, um, but he was holding onto his paddle with the other hand. And therefore I couldn't, uh, I was always on the other side of his boat just the way it worked out. So he was slapping the boat with one hand and I was on the other side. So if you're going for the T-Rescue, you got to slap with both hands. But hey, he hung in there for a long time, man. He managed to keep his boat and his paddle. Got him all to shore. So we're, uh, we're just dumping out. We're about ready to roll. When Guy shoved back in, he took off down river and he knew we were gonna eddy out after the bridge. But for this little bit of river here, we were a little more spaced out than I would like to see. If you are the front man in the crew, you need to be constantly looking back every 20 or 30 seconds at least, just to be sure everyone in the crew is kind of hanging out together. If you get too spaced apart, uh, you can miss being able to signal dangers like this log here 
Another thing being spaced out too far does is minimizes the ability to help your fellow paddler. So I'd like to stay a little more compact, just not crowded. And in this next stretch, I send Evan off front. He's never seen this river. And uh, it's always fun to start making decisions on your own on how to get down the rapids. He does a fantastic job. At 2500 CFS, small rapids occur everywhere, but there's also something a little bit new to Evan, and that's called ledge holes. And they're a lot more grabby and retentive than just a wave or a small rapid that he's been used to. So a ledge hole happens when water almost uniformly pours over a rock ledge and the water on the surface of the river is actually running back into the ledge hole. And you need to kind of start avoiding those as the water increases. An introduction to how to read a river will be to look for the V and that's always important. But now as we start moving up in the food chain on rivers and on volume of flow, we really always need to be paying attention to outflow from a rapid. If there's no outflow from a ledge or a rapid you're going into, it's likely not the best place to go through that rapid. You need to have water moving downstream to exit a hole or a rapid or a ledge. And when you're approaching a large rapid, you need to shoot for the place that's most gonna give you safe passage. That's usually the most amount of water moving downstream through the whole rapid from the top to the bottom and afterwards. So that's something we were looking at. And these can be big or small. This is pretty much a straightforward flush, nothing to worry about there. But there will be a couple times downstream where Evan really doesn't recognize the hole and he uh, gets stopped and almost back surfs. But that's all part of the learning process. This is a great level to be getting into some of this and it's great to see a new piece of river, something they're not used to. This is Copeland Rapids. It's the best stretch on the run. It's a couple hundred yards, maybe 300 yards of class two, three boogie water. Depending on the level, it really never washes out and even at flood stage, the drop in this section is enough to produce some whopper wave trains. And so this was new to Evan where it's just fluffy water from top to bottom. You never encounter a rock. You're just shooting for the biggest wave train or feature you can find and you're having fun. But as I mentioned before, you should always be looking for outflow when approaching a rapid. And Pete is veering a little bit right, but he sees it, corrects out. There's a hole. You see there's no downward flow of water. You really don't want to go into that spot right there. You can get stuck pretty easily. I look back at it. You always want to be chasing the flow, making sure there's an exit to the rapid you're getting into. And naturally, the bigger a hole gets and the worse it looks, the easier they are to identify. Pete skirts this one just to the right and Evan goes for it, not realizing it's a hole there and it almost stops him and almost sucks down his stern, kicks his nose up a little bit, and a couple hard strokes and he's through. Had a little nervous look on his face, but we're learning and we're having fun and that's what it's all about. Got it. Uh oh, lean left, lean left. Careful. 
careful. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, Evan. Way to recover. That was scary, wasn't it? I can see your eyes. <laughs> oh, he almost went deep six. It got his bow. Took him down under. Way to keep up paddling, bro. Give me five on that. I saw the fear in your eyes when you turned around. I want a, I want a hand. That's what I'm talking about. Good Eddie, Evan. That was fantastic. There's a rock. Yeah. Surfing the boogie, baby. All right, see the exposed boulder? We want to go just to the left of that boulder. Oh, wow. That's the slot. It's a little bit washed out. Hit the wave trains, yeah. She's a little washed out. Is that a pillow rock in the middle there? Yep. I, mean, I know how to boof the pillow. Boofers on this river aren't good. They're hard. Okay. <laughs> now that's a great surf spot. This river's not great for boofing because the rocks are so sharp. Careful. You didn't commit to anything. You went, you got in the seam and sat there, which is the worst place. <laughs> Where they try to take me. There is a rock like under that mound. So if you do tip, Tuck forward. I think I'm just gonna go into it. Get some speed up when you do it. More lean. This will do. We're on the back of Goose Poo Island number two here. What do you think, Evan? Is this a great break spot? Yeah. yeah. Any spot's a great break spot, right? How you feeling today, boys? Fine, fine. Awesome. Good stretch of river for you, Evan? Yep. Best ever? Yeah? 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 Mm -hmm. All right. Here you go, buddy. Rank today's stretch of river one to ten. Mm, five. Five. A little better than a Catawba. All right. Right ten. on. Ten? Or Ev, we gotta get you out there on the Teleco. Wilson, Nanahala. Nine. How'd you rate the Nanahala? Four. No. It's too cold. No. Cold. All right, so we had us a nice break here on, uh... hold on. Why? Huh? What? Ooh. All right, so we had us a nice break here on Goose Poo Island number two. Guys getting back in, loaded up. Ooh, that's tight squeeze, baby. He's in there. We're just above the country park uh, access. We're heading on down to Red Slide today. Off in the distance, about as far as I can see there, the water is dancing again, so we're about through with this uh, half mile of nothing. But today, as you see, the water is up. It is flowing quick, so even the slow parts aren't that bad. What do you say, Evan, you ready?
got it. Look at that hole. That's a hole. You'll know it if you get in that one. I'm gonna give it a go. Huh? It's changing. The foam line, it moves up and it moves back. Sucking me in.
Oh, you're gonna be in it in a minute. <laughs> You getting out? <laughs> He's like, I'm done. I ain't doing all that surfing. All right, so we just got off the river. It's about 4.30. We are starving. And we're over here at world famous Zach's Hot Dogs. Probably the best hot dog you'll ever eat. I used to come here for my senior lunch at high school. We could get off and go to a restaurant. Well, yours is pretty much gone, Evan. Yeah. <laughs> how was it? Good. Awesome fries. Pete, how is it, buddy? Zach's hot dogs. They got a mean hot dog, folks. And quick. You sit down. Sitting down to eating is maybe three minutes. What do you think, guy? How is it? Delicious. Chili cheese dog. Right on. Perfect way to end a kayaking trip. What do you think, Evan? I yep. Give today a, a rating one to 10. 10 is what I'm talking about. All right, Evan, strong work again. Getting better and better, yeah. young man. <laughs> good work. Always good. Good stuff, guy. Yes, sir. Strong swim out there. <laughs> Caught the weird Eddie, it happens. Glad you came, had a fun time. Perfect way to end a Saturday. And I'll talk to you tomorrow night. See you again soon, guys.